Hello everyone, welcome to Sergio Prado's YouTube channel. So in this video, we will learn how to create a custom Linux distribution for an embedded Linux device. Um, I'm going to do the tests on the Raspberry Pi, but uh, with a few uh, adaptations, you can do this for other boards as well. The reason I'm doing this video is because during my career, I have seen lots of people and company developing embedded Linux systems, but um, using um, desktop distributions on their system. And like, uh, for example, Debian, that is a very popular desktop system. Um, I, I don't see a real problem like using Debian on a embedded Linux system, especially if you are doing some prototyping, uh, testing, that stuff. But if you really want to develop and build a product that's going to um, be in the market for several years, then you're going to have a real problem. Because maintaining an embedded Linux system over time is hard. And if you are using a desktop distribution, you are mainly working with binaries, and that's bad. You don't have much flexibility. You're going to... You're going to have a distribution that is not really optimized for your hardware. That means you're going to consume more CPU memory. Uh, you're going to have a higher boot time compared to a custom distribution. You're going to have security problems. Maintaining over time, it's hard, like doing remote updates, for example. So there are a lot of problems and challenges if you decide to use a desktop based distribution on a embedded Linux system. And I want to show you how easy it is to create a custom distribution for an embedded Linux system. And here I'm going to use two, two projects, Beauty Root and Yocto. So let's see if I can do that. I'm going to do everything from scratch here. So let's get started. So as you can see, I have here the Raspberry Pi. It's Raspberry Pi Model 4B. And uh, I'm going to start with Build Root. So, Build Root is one of the options for building a custom Linux distribution. And I usually say nowadays we have two major projects Build Root and uh, Open Embedded slash Octo. I usually don't say one is better than the other i usually say they complement each other depending on the project and the development team and other factors you you might want to use build root or yocto build root is simpler it's more intuitive compared to to yocto it built faster as well but on the other side it's not that flexible so Yocto is more flexible, you can do more things, you can do package management. E most of the hardware vendors, they provide BSPs based on Yocto. So that's usually one of the good reasons you, you need to use Yocto. In the end, um, I think every embedded Linux developer needs to understand and know how to use both. So we're going to start this video with build root. This is the build root website and I'm going to really do everything from scratch. So I will first download build root. I'm going to take the latest version that we have here. Open my terminal. Let me create here a build directory. And then let's download build root. Build root is small, I mean, a few seconds, you can download it. Uncompress it, here we go. Now we have build root here. This is our build system. How to use build root? So build root provides this uh, kconfig interface. You can just run make menu config to open the configuration menu. And then you can just configure your embedded Linux system. You can define your target options, the architecture of the hardware, 
you can uh, define information about the tool chain you can use build root tool chain or an external tool chain and then you can define information about the tool chain like what is the c lib library you want to use the kernel headers all that stuff you can define information about the bootloader that you want to use like uboot or bare box uh, you can define information about the kernel and also you can define information about the root file system so all of the components from the embedded linux system and what is nice about build root is that it provides this very friendly easy to use interface to configure the system so as soon as the system is configured you can save it and then run make and that's it as easy as that i want to build an image for the raspberry pi so that means i will need to go here and configure the system for the raspberry pi and that's not really straightforward but what you can do is you can load a pre configured file so build root comes with a few actually a lot of the full configuration files for those maker boards and this development boards provided by the vendors and we also have configs for the Raspberry Pi as you can see here so from Raspberry Pi 0 to 4 right and if you want to build for the Raspberry Pi you can just load one of those configs so I'm gonna load it this one so this is the config for the Raspberry Pi 4 to do a 64 bits build. I loaded the config. If I want to check the config, I can. Uh, so I can check the architecture of the hardware, configuration about the tool chain, configuration about the kernel. I can see it's going to download the kernel from the Raspberry Pi Foundation GitHub repository. To do a test, let's enable something here um, in the root file system. So I'm going to go here, target packages. And this is very nice because here you can enable a lot of common open source software that you might want to use in your distribution. For example, let's enable i square c tools, maybe. Um, so... Let's enable EV test. It's here. EV test is a nice tool to monitor uh, input devices in the system. So I'm going to enable it. And what is nice is that you can just search for the components like uh, you want uh, libusb. I don't know. Then you have there libusb. It's option two here, as you can see. Two. And if I press two, I can enable libusb. And that's it. As soon as you are done, you selected your components, then you can just save it and oops and make it. Then build your root will start to build everything. So it will download all of the components, it will start building the tool chain, and then after that the other components like the bootloader, the U-boot, the Linux kernel. Uh, and the root file system it might take this so this build might take 20 minutes maybe in my machine depending on the machine might take more or less time so it's really fast especially compared to yocto i of course i'm not we will not wait for this build to finish here so i want to show you the result i have here already build the root and that i have like done the build before recording this video so when the build is finished you're gonna see this directory output images and there you have the images so you have there the boot files the bootloader files this boot.vfetch you should record this in a fat partition in the sd card and then you have the kernel artifacts the device tree um, you have the root file system in XT2 
format and you also have the SD card image so that's the most important thing for us here because I just want to flash the generated image into the SD card and then boot this in the device so I want to flash this in my SD card I'm going to do this now so I have here my SD card let me check here SDB so it's there I'm going to use the good and ODD to flash this image of course I need to be very careful not write to my disk right uh, output file it is the SDB I'm going to use a block size of one Mac and then I guess that's it Oops, wrong password. Oh, it's not block, it's sorry, BS. All right, sync. Here we go. We flash the image to the SD card, and um, the SD card is here. As you can see, I'm gonna connect Raspberry Pi and then here I have the console so I have this cable connect to the Raspberry Pi this is my console let's see if it works turn it on and we should see it takes a few seconds for the bootloader to boot and then we should see the kernel logs very good here we go. Welcome to build root. Then, um, so in a few comments in the terminal, right? So I just we can just download build root and compress it, load the Raspberry Pi dev config file and run make. How many comments? Four or five. You can create a custom distribution. If you want to add stuff, you can just get back there, right? Make menu config. Let's say you want uh, Python. So you can just go there. You might have here lots of Python. So we might want to go to target packages, interpreter. And then here, let's say I want Python 3. I just enable Python 3. And I can select here by the Python module that I want to use. In the end, I just want to save it, run another make, wait a few more minutes, and flash the new image to test it. And that's it. So it's not that right, uh, hard, right, to create our own Linux distribution with build root. Let's see now how that would work with the Octo. So. This is Yocto's website. So Yocto project, it's a project created in 2010, but actually most of the tools, they were created before Yocto. Uh, Yocto uses Open Embedded as its build system, and Open Embedded is much, much older than Yocto. But of course, Yocto was responsible for making like Open Embedded very, very popular among embedded Linux developers. Yocto is much, much more flexible, but at the same time, it's, I would say, much harder to learn compared to other approaches like build root. Yocto is based on the concept of layers. So you need to download um, repositories from different places to work with Yocto. In our case, we want to create a custom Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi. So we need the base, like the base tools from Yocto, uh, the Bitbake tool, we need Open Embedded Core that provides a set of uh, metadata to work with Bitbake. 
And we also need uh, the Raspberry Pi layer that has this uh, metadata for the Raspberry Pi. So that, that is this concept of layer in Yocto where they store a metadata that is used to create the distribution. Of course, I don't intend here to teach you Yocto. Uh, we need at least a few days to do that. But I just wanted to show you that it's not that hard as well to create a Linux distribution with Yocto. So the first thing that you might want to do is download a repository called Pocky. And uh, Pocky is what they call it, a uh, reference distribution from the Yocto project. And it's kind of a start point for working with Yocto. So here I have Pocky. I'm just copying the repository. I, I want to clone the repository on my machine. So build. Let's call here Yocto. Yocto. Uh, and then let's, let's create here a directory, call it Thursys. And we're going to start there. Okay. Oops, I want to... I want to clone a specific version of Pocky. So Yocto has this concept of uh, long-term support versions. If I just clone Pocky like this, I'm going to clone the master branch. And the master branch is a development branch. So I don't want to work with development branch. So I want to clone the Kirkstone branch. That's the latest LTS version as of this recording should be fast all right so now i have pocky so inside pocky i have bitbake that's the task executor from the build system and we have several metadata to build a linux distribution but to work with the Raspberry pi i need more than that so I need the Raspberry Pi layer. One nice thing about Yocto is that there is this uh, database of layers at this website, layers.openembedded.org. And here you can check and search for metadata. So I want to work with the Raspberry Pi. I can just go here, machines, and search for it. Raspberry Pi. And then I can see if there is any layer providing the configuration for the Raspberry Pi. And there is one, call it Meta Raspberry Pi. So here we go. I can copy the repository and clone it to my machine. Git clone. I'm going to also clone the Kirkstone version. Oops. Here we go. Now we have Meta Raspberry Pi that has the metadata for the Raspberry Pi. And we have Pocky, our reference distribution. There we have Bitbacon and a few basic metadata that we need to build the distribution. Now we are ready to build the distribution. We have the sources. Now the next thing to do, so Yocto doesn't provide that uh, graphical K-config based interface. You have to do it by editing files. So the first thing that you need to do is to search a configuration file it's uh, inside Pocky, call it OE init build in. When you do this, a build directory is created for you, for you, and then a few configuration files are also created, as you can see here. Two important files here are bblayers.conf and local.conf. Yocto and Open Embedded, they work by 
file. So when you are working with, uh, with, with Open Embedded and Yocto, you'll be always editing files. Those files is what we call metadata. So this is a configuration file. And there you have several variables and you have to edit those variables to work with the, the, the build system. This file, this is the file that you're going to add the layers that you, you want to use. So here you can see we have the meta and meta pocket layers already enabled. The meta layer is the open embedded core. And it's very important because there we have the main, like the basic metadata to build the distribution. All of the logic to build the tool chain and the basic root file system components. We need that. In MetaPoc, we have some metadata for the POC distribution. Since we want to build the POC distribution here for the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to keep it there. Now, the Meta Yocto BSP, we don't need it because we're not going to use the machines provided by the BSP, by the Yocto, uh, by the POC BSP. I just need to add now the layer for the Raspberry Pi. Meta has very high. So, oops. all right. So now we have the metadata configured in this BB layers variable. Now we have to change the other file, the local.com file. This is where we configure the build. For us here, the most important variable is this machine variable. Since we want to build for the Raspberry Pi, we need to change the name of the machine. How do you know the name of the machine? If you go to the Raspberry Pi layer, you're going to have this conf machine directory with all of the available machines so each and every file here is a machine available for you to build we want to build for the raspberry pi you have a 32 bits build here and a 64 bits build here so this is the one we want and this is the name of the machine this is what we want to add to this machine variable Here we go. That's basically what you need to do in terms of configuration. There is one special thing about the Raspberry Pi is that the build is done without the serial port, the console support. So if you want to build and have access to the logs in the terminal, then you need to add this variable here, enable UI. This is specifically for the Raspberry Pi. It's documented in the, in the layer. With this, we can see the logs like from the kernel and we can log in using the serial port to talk to the device. That's the only thing. After that, you can build an image. So you're going to use Bitbake. That's the command line interface like you have with the build system and then you just have to build an image there are several like images available that you can build i'm gonna build one of the most popular core image manual uh, all right i'm getting an error here pocket not found um, maybe i mess up my bblayers.conf. Yeah, I messed up because I removed the wrong layer here. So here we want MetaPocky. We don't want the other layer. MetaPocky is where we have the Pocky distribution. Let's try again. All right. Now the build started i will cancel it because 
it will take much more time, like probably one hour, one hour and something. Although I have a nice machine here, um, it will take a little bit of time. But that's how you do it. Like you can just clone Pocky and a few extra layers that you want to work with. Then you add those layers to that uh, bblayers.com file. You go to local.com file, configure the machine that you want to build, and then just bit bake an image. In the end of the build, you're going to have... This is the build that I have done before recording this uh, video. And then there we can see inside TMP deploy images, Raspberry Pi, the images. And there we have the final image. This is the one that you can just flash to the SD card to test it. So let's do that now. Let me go to the directory. And then here I'm going to... So this image... It has a special format. Call it weak. Actually, it's a whole image that you can just DD to the device. You just have to uncompress it first. But there is also this bmap file that was created together with the image. And because we have this bmap file, we can use a nice tool that makes the process to, to, to write the image to the SD card pretty much faster. That's the bmap tool. And we can use this tool. I'm going to have to add sudo in the beginning. And then I need to say that I want to write the image. Oh, no, it's not right. It's copy. Copy. And then the image that this one and the device, the FSDB. So what is nice about this tool is that it is able to automatically uncompress this image. It is able to let you know if you have the device, like a partition of the device mounted. So you don't write to the wrong partition or the wrong device. Maybe it's, the, it's my case now because maybe let me check here. Yeah, it's automatically mounted. I need to unmount first or the tool fail. Yeah, now, oh no, another one here. So now it is not mounted. Now I can write to it. And it's also much faster. So let's run it. Here we go. Flash it, the image. Um, let's test. Let's see if it works. I'll turn it on. I'll go to the console. We should see after a few seconds the kernel logs. Here we go. And then the distro created by Yocto. Trying to get an IP. Here we go. Pocky Yocto Prof project reference distro. We can log in with the root user without password. We have our small embedded Linux system to start working with. All right. Um, I hope you enjoy it. So, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, my purpose here was to show you that it was not, it's not that hard to create a custom Linux distribution. Of course, there are lots of things you need to learn about different topics, but um, it's easy to start. Build root or the octo, it doesn't matter. 
the fact is that if you are or pretend to be an embedded Linux developer, you're going to have to learn how to work with these tools. So I'm going to leave some links in the description of the video. I hope you enjoy the content. And if you really enjoy it, don't forget to click in the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment or question in the, in the uh, comments of the video. And uh, yeah, until next time, have fun.